Hi, Vanessa from the Healthy Lifestyles team. So we're several weeks now into lockdown. Uh, the hair has got slightly longer. But I would say on the whole that um, things in our household have settled down a little bit uh, now that we know what is expected of us. Um, it seems a little bit calmer. I also find, as I said before, that routine really does help and uh, exercise is definitely part of that routine. But it's also um, a little mantra that I have for myself is um, attitude shapes your experience. And I'm trying to hold on to that. So even if I'm feeling at a little bit of a low ebb, um, I might think about, you know, my attitude and, and what I'm bringing and showing up with. And sometimes that does help me to lift myself up. So this session today, uh, we're going to be working your joints and your bones through their range of movement. Everybody's range of movement is going to be different. It depends on your own flexibility and possibly if you've had an injury in the past, you might have less range of movement than another person. This exercise session will be useful for you if you've spent a fair amount of time being sedentary it could also be useful if you've just got out of bed. So either of those situations um, would be a good time to do this session. Before you do so though, just check in. Are you feeling okay today? Feeling okay to exercise? Are you wearing something nice and comfortable? I've chosen to go in bare feet today because um, it's low intensity and at all times, apart from one exercise that we'll be doing, you'll have both feet on the floor. So barefoot is absolutely fine today. And do make sure that you've got some water to hand as well, just in case you need it. And a chair, if you're likely to need some support uh, when we're taking that one foot off the ground. So without further ado, let's get started. As always, we're going to start by just making sure the clothing's in the right position. And then we'll look at our posture. So taking a sideways stance here, and my feet are below my hips and they're nicely grounded into the floor. And we can test that out just by moving forward. So we're transferring the weight forward maybe, transferring it back into the heels. So don't overdo it, but just really testing your balance side to side, back to the middle, okay, and then when you get back to centre, really feel again that, that connection with the floor, coming up the legs, soften the knees, tilt the hips under, roll the shoulders back and down, so really lifting the chest, shoulders back and down, Imagine you've got an orange underneath your chin, so you're keeping your chin nicely off your chest, pulling everything back. Okay, so when we talk about the body moving, we talk about it in relation to the body being in a fetal position. So when we're coming down, we're flexing through the spine, we're flexing in towards the fetal position. And then when we come out, so we extend away, we're extending away from that fetal position and then maybe a little back extension there as well. So there's lots of different terms that are used to refer to moving our body, but they're all referred to and related to in moving away or towards the fetal position. So we're gonna start with the neck and we're just going to turn the head to one side for some rotation to the middle and to the other side back to the middle so try and inhale in one direction and exhale in the other just going to drop the chin to the chest Lengthen through the back of the neck. 
and then up towards the ceiling. Don't hyperextend the neck too much. And down. And we're going to come down ear to shoulder now. Lift and release the other arm gently down the side of the body. Feel a nice lengthening through the side of the neck. And to the other side. Lift and lengthen. And up. Now you can do this again, but this time if you wanted to, just hold your hand on your head just to apply a tiny little bit more pressure. And likewise on the other side. So lift and lengthen. Perfect. Now we can link the hands together. We're going to use the thumbs. So turn, look towards. Use your thumbs to just massage into your neck. So you give a little bit of a self massage there. And then you can use your hands to squeeze into the muscles around your neck as well on both sides. Okay. Now we're going to go to the shoulders now. And I'm going to stay in this position. Uh, but you're standing at the moment and you've got your feet nicely connected with the floor, your hips tilted under. The hands are going to relax down the side of the body and we're simply just going to bring the shoulders up to the ears and down. Just shrugging the shoulders up and down. So you can breathe in in one direction and out in the other. So elevation and depression of the shoulders. And then if I move sideways, we're going to bring the shoulders forward. So we're protracting them and then we're retracting them and squeezing them back. So really exaggerate, squeeze back. Now you can grow that move by this time, instead of just moving the shoulders, move the arms forward as well as if you were scooping up lots of wet sand, imagining you're on a lovely sunny beach somewhere, stretching forward from the shoulders. And then we open up, so we retrace those steps, pushing the arms back, Squeezing the shoulder blades, lifting the chest. So forward. Scooping up that wet sand. And back. Wonderful. And we'll just bring the arms beside us now. So palms are facing forward. But we're just going to rotate the hands now so the palms are facing back. So circumduction of the shoulder joints. That's it. Contracting those muscles in your arms. One more time. And then we'll go into a few more shoulder rolls. So this time we're making a little bit more effort to lift the shoulder. Now this is where we really want to maintain an upright position in the frame. So your range of movement may be less than mine, but it's about keeping the body nice and straight. And then you can gradually extend. So this might be your range of movement. So don't try to compensate by leaning over. Okay, we want to keep the body straight. So work with whatever range of movement you've got. So the optimum is to lift up, 
brush the side of the face and look behind you. But that's not a problem if you are not able to do that. You work within the range of movement that you've got. Wonderful. And then you might try just to spice things up a little bit. Both arms up in front, sending one arm behind and back up to the top. See if you can do that. That will test your coordination, go in the opposite direction. Wonderful. And drop the arms down. So we could all do with a little bit of a hug right now, couldn't we? So let's do that. Let's take our arms out and fold one arm on top of the other. Use your hands to just get your fingers right down by your shoulder blades and give yourself a jolly good squeeze. And if you want to lift your elbows up, and relax. Check which arm's on top, open up, and go the other way. So, squeezing your shoulders, lifting up, Lovely, and then just release. So I'm obviously here on my knees, just so that you can get a better picture of me in the video. It's not high tech here, we're doing the best we can do. So you're standing up, nice solid footing, your hips are tilted under, your belly button's pulled back, your shoulders are back and down. We're going to do some side body work now. So hands beside you, and just tilting the body down to one side. You're creeping your hands down your shoulder, uh, down your trouser legs rather. Up to the middle and tilt to the other side. Okay, one more time on each side. So lengthening. Okay, now we're going to take the arms above the head now to just do a little bit more with the side body. So the elbows are shining up towards the ceiling. We lift the arms and we're not taking the shoulders with us. The shoulders are going to stay in place and we're just going to now go over to one side. So you're going to press down through your feet. I'm pressing down through the tops of my feet to give myself stability. Over we go. Use the midsection to come back up. So really press down to lift up, over to the other side. Okay, take hold of your wrist this time, over you go. Just lift that arm over your head, lift the chest up, we come, swap wrists, other side. So we've got side body and stretching up and through the shoulder here, chest up. Perfect. Now don't just flop your arms down, allow them to come down and just really feel it out. Okay, so we'll move on now to the spine. So we'll start by doing some roll downs. Okay, starting at the top, firstly check your posture, all those key tips as before, soften the knees, tilt the hips under, shoulders back and down. Really think of lengthening through the top of the head. So we're standing nice and tall and we're grounding from our feet up. And then we tilt the chin in towards the body. So we're flexing in towards the fetal position, 
We're curling down through the spine. Now this may be your range of movement. This may be where you will get to. So you just hang here and allow body weight to just give you a nice little stretch in the lower back. Now if you are able to go a bit further, we go further down towards the floor. Again, stop at any time. And if you have a little bit more range of movement, then we keep going down. Now, once you're there, we just hold that position, breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. You could turn to look over one shoulder. And turn to look over the other. Reach forward in space. And maybe just tuck your head in and look between your trouser legs. Very relax. Soften your knees. Use your hands on your thighs if you wish to, but really think consciously you're using your tummy and you're uncurling. You're not using the pressure on your hands to come up. You're uncurling through the core of your body. You're bowling all the way back and down with the shoulders and then you might finish off with a little back extension. So strengthening for the lower base of the spine. At this point, you might pause the video and do that a couple more times, but we're going to move on to do some hinge work from the hip. So imagine now, again, nice and tall through the spine, but we're simply just going to hinge forward, leading with your nose, with your chest, into a nice flat back position. So lengthen out through the top of the head, you might just put your elbows into the side, nice little grasshopper arms, soft knees, pull that belly button back, breathe. So we're coming back up, again through the hip joint. And then back down. So just sort of visualise that sort of number seven shape, but you know, don't worry if you're not achieving it, it's that visualisation. And now we're going to go into some extension and flexion of the spine. So the cat-cow position, we're just going to tuck the head in. And then drop the tummy down. And look forward. So try not lock the knees. Just do it again. Pull that belly button back. I'll just drop my arms down so you can get a better idea. And we'll come back to flat back. And from there, hinge back up. On the hip. We're going to look at now rotating the spine. So this time the hands are going to come up beside you. Now we're looking for a straight line across the top of the shoulders from elbow to elbow. It may not be possible for you to do that. You might have an injury with one shoulder for example. So you may have it down here. You may not be able to have your arm in that position. So do what works for you. We're working on rotating through the spine. So we need to try and isolate the top part of our body from the bottom part of our body. So it's just the top part that's moving. And we just rotate, leading from the elbow to look to one side. 
So key here is, is push this hip forward. So push it forward to try and keep square in the lower body. So you're isolating the lower body from the upper body. And then come back and to the other side. Push the hip forward. And back. Lovely, one more time. and then bring the arms down. So just, again, really fill that out. If you want to, you could just give a little bit of a swing of the arms. Now we're going down to the hips now. So you might want to pause the video and grab yourself a chair. I'm going to just bring my chair out. So never hesitate to use the support if you need it. Uh, it's much better to support yourself than to sort of wibble wobble around if you lose your balance. We're going to just open up through the hip. We'll keep the leg nice and low to begin with, just polishing the floor. So softening through the standing leg. Lovely. And then you could just progress that by lifting the leg off the floor. And if you can, lift the knee right up and down, and down. And then we go to the other side. Keep the foot low on the floor. as if you're polishing the floor with your foot. And then lift the knee and open. And then come a little bit higher up. And then we can take the leg forward and to the side. So again, use your support if you need to. So moving the leg forward and then out to the side. And then to the other leg. And out to the side. Okay. Just finishing off with the hips, we're just going to roll the hips. So you can exaggerate this move as much as you want to, soften through the knee joint. Taking in the opposite direction. And then come upright. So we're moving down the body now. So we've gone from the hips, we're going down to the knees. So we're not actually doing strengthening exercises as such. We're just putting your joints through their range of movement. So we're going to do some little squats. So you might want to use the chair to do your squats. You can sit down and stand up, or you can do it without the chair. So moving the chair away, And then again, we're just popping the knees through their range of movement. 
press down through your feet. We're not going too deep. One more time. And up. And then a few heel kicks. So you may be able to just give yourself a little kick up the bum. Okay. And then coming down towards your feet now. So just check your posture. Make sure your hips are underneath you. Your shoulders are rolled back and down. Feet are hip width apart. And we're just going to go for a heel toe. So digging the heel in and then into the toe. Okay. And then a little bit of rotation. So you can hold on to your chair if you want to. Okay, the ankle joint is a hinge joint, it's not a ball and socket joint, so it's not fully able to rotate, but there is a degree of rotation there. Other side, heel, toe. And rotate. So coming down to the toes now, so pressing your feet into the floor, lifting all your toes off the floor. I've got a slight impingement on my left big toe following an operation, so I can't lift them up quite as high. Relax and up and down. One more time. And let's see if we can just press down through the big toe joint. Lifting up the rest of your toes, relax, press down, relax, and then maybe start with the little toes and dropping them all down individually. It takes a lot of concentration. It's good to massage your feet to try and get these joints to work individually. It's really difficult. Okay. And then a little bit of opposition. So thumb to forefinger and then working through all of your fingers. Okay. Rotation of the wrists. Give everything a good shake. concludes our session today. Um, we've been looking at just putting your joints through their natural range of movement. Give it a go. What have you got to lose? Just try and reduce the amount of time you, you are sedentary and uh, you could do any of these exercises uh, anytime. Just pause the video and uh, try some of them out. Maybe do them a little bit more. I hope you can take something away from this. I mean, well done if you've watched it to the end and uh, you're still smiling, okay? If you can take a smile away from this, then it makes the pain of doing it <laughs> worthwhile. Um, you may have heard the halfway through there that my son came into the kitchen. Um, I was trying very hard not to get cross, but uh, we've made it to the end and I, I hope that you found it useful. And remember guys, your attitude shapes your experience. So I am now not going to go upstairs and shout at my son. I'm going to be very calm. Okay, until next time. Bye.